is July 16th, 2005. There's Mr. Bill Swanson. We're out in, I guess we're in Madison. Actually, we're in Geauga County. Geauga County. Closer to Thompson. Okay. And we're going to set up, we'll talk more about Indian lore later, but we're going to record the setting up of the teepee. Griffin's here too, but he's playing in the car. Here it comes. Okay, put your shoes on and come on. I uh, wandered over there. Lo and behold, he's got the keys in the ignition. <laughs> Luckily, they make cars now where even if you got it started, I don't think he's tall enough to get it over here. Yeah, it does. Because of, now, this is the lifting point. So, what the, the trick is, after, if, if we were starting from scratch, you set the tripod up, and then there's a method that you start, you put those four poles in first on the right side, then you put these four in, then you put this pole and this pole, you skip a pot, because this is where that'll go, and then you put this one in. And then you go around and you wrap that just to tie it all together. So you just have a long rope and you walk way out to the right. side. Right. I mean, you don't have to shimmy up there or anything like that. Alright. So that's that's probably 50% of setting up the TV is setting up the poles. And the trick is knowing the distance that the poles need to be seen. Because when you see this, when we take the canvas around, if they're too far out, it won't fit. If they're too far in, it overlaps and it's not right. So there is a magic you gotta be on in order for it to work. They're not, they're free. You don't need them. Gotta get the decorations out. Signify the chief's lodge as a horse tail on the, on the lifting pole. Okay, Chief's Lodge. So be it. Okay, now we cheat and we mark on the pole where to tie it. Why is that cheating? Well, if you were a real Indian, you'd, you'd just eyeball and say, there. You tie didn't, it there. You, if you're a real Indian, you didn't have a marker. <laughs> ah. Exactly.
Oh, he's got his boots on. Okay, if you can get under the pole, okay. and right up where it's tied. The horse's tail or this right, one? Right about here. So what we're going to do is you're just going to lift it up, and I'm going to make sure the bottom doesn't slide out, and just walk underneath it and bring it up. Okay. Look at that. There you go. It's a cow skull. Oh. What's it, ask him what's it for. What's it for? They had a dead cow and it just was here. So we didn't want to do anything to it. We didn't want to hurt it. So we just put it hey. on a pile of Come here, Griffin. Come here. Come on. Look, see his teeth? Oh. Come here. I hear stand. something. You got to stand in the teepee. Uh, what is that noise? Like Now, does everyone in the tribe have their own uh, teepee equipment or no? Or share? Um, we try to share the lodge. Let's see, I don't. Ah, wrong one. See, that was two thousand. Here's oh four. Um, they're not cheap, um, but just 
the teepee itself is maybe the price of a good wall tent. 300, 400 bucks. Now were these guys that you were buddies with that just No, them? just just the one guy. He and I grew up together in Columbus. And he's the last guy that I have as a high school buddy. Okay. Yeah, I think did I meet him at your welcome back to from getting better yes. party? Yes. Okay. Thank God I'm alive. <laughs> and he was out at uh, Andy's wedding. Oh yeah? I don't know if I talked to him then. Real tall fellow. His high school nickname was Stick. Uh, and his dad, long story short, he was a uh, botanist for Patel Research in Columbus. And the most gregarious guy, I mean, he'd walk up and he'd know your family history in 15 minutes if he just walked up to you on the street. And they had been going out west since Dick was six, so that's 53 years ago they started going out. And he saw the Lobbins, who wrote the book on the Indian teepee. They used to perform out at Jackson Lake Lodge. And he got to know them, and then he arranged, Patel had a, a fund where they would bring in certain artists and perform in Columbus. Well, he got them to come into Columbus to perform. So one summer when we were out west, because he had arranged for them some income, they let us come out and visit them. And they had their teepee set up, and they let us spend the night in the teepee. That was it. That was 1969 or 1970. I said, they're in, I'm getting a teepee. And <laughs> they referred me to this guy here in Cleveland, Nelson, and he had a teepee, and he was the bow maker. And so that's how I met him. Okay. And then uh, when Nancy and I got married, he gave us each a bow for our wedding present. And Dick, my friend in Columbus, wanted one, so his dad asked me to ask if he would sell him one. I don't think Nelson ever sold a bow. He gave him away. And so I think he was a smart man, and he saw that if I had a friend that was also into this, that that would develop the relationship and cement the, you know, get, getting into the, the art and craft. And that's, that's how we started. So does not stick? Does he make his own bows also? Uh, he made one. He, he finally, he is an expert quiller and beater. Uh, meticulous as the day is long. He's got the patience of Job. I, did, I just don't know if I could do that. <laughs> and finally, he wanted to make a bow, and so we worked on it. And he's shooting his own bow now. And his son, who's the one that just went into the Navy, he started, he was going to Case Western Reserve, and he started a bow. And I started working with him on teaching him how to make a bow. But then the Navy got in the way, and he's off to the Navy. So, how do you get up there? Time out for the tape. <laughs> Take a quick look at our helper. Can't get good help these days. Somebody's climbed on the roof of the truck. And it's just having a good old time. Unbelievable. Just like his mother. Alright. Definitely his mother's. Okay, we are now retied and we're gonna hoist again. Like this is uh you can set this up yourself too then right yeah it's this is the only awkward part is keeping the, the pole from so sliding, sliding out you. from under you now the 22 footer it just looks too much you really need Folds together into a compact little package. Yeah. 
Can you get down, please? You're going to hurt the car. Climb down. Over here it is, but it's not okay over here. Be careful, be careful, be careful. <laughs> they literally control the, the draft in the teepee and if you have wind it prevents the wind from blowing the smoke back down in the lot. Okay. Funny story. Hey, My mom. Okay, now we're gonna put lacing pins in, and I may need somebody with your height. Okay. Can you hold these? Hold on. Okay. Did mom ever sleep in the TV? No. <laughs> These two, we need to tie these until they're right. snug up. Yeah. Close. Uh, we need a little three, more. Four inches.
won't be uh, 100% airtight, but pretty close. Oh, you got okay? Yeah. Like that? Yeah. I need one. Time to here. Work, work, work. Now, notice these are closer together. These are farther apart. Yeah, I gotta get so that goes on the outside. Hey Griff, I need another one. Can you give Uncle Billy another one? Mm. Okay. Give me another one in the sock. Do you have enough light? I think so. And we can, uh, as we upload it to the computer, we can add light. That's the door, Griffy. We'll leave it open so that we can get all our stuff in there. Stand by. Okay. Shoot a bow and arrow. Yes, you are. Okay, you can put that back in. We don't need that one. Bam. Pulls out. Okay. Okay. And, and that's why it was so tight. Normally, after you take it down, you pull those poles in so that the cameras will go around. Nick, hold. Nick, hold. Nick. Oh. There you go. Now we're ready for the liner. All right. And that okay, now we're in the TP and it's been set up. Being about uh, four foot high, tied a rope around, and that holds this liner. And the purpose of that is to create an updraft along the edges so that when we light the fire, there's a air current that carries the smoke out the smoke flap. Right, Griffin? And Griffin help us, helped us set that up. And now we're going to get our camping gear. And then we'll be set. All right, Griffin, say cheese to the camera. No. All right. All right. Now this is a wrist protector. Wrist guard. Wrist guard. Okay, so it's you're essentially sewing belt holes or straps so that you can fit it to our wrists. All right. Jeff didn't have a fat wrist. I don't know what that noise was. I'm not changing it. 
I can edit that out of the tape, just so you know. <laughs> Do you know what it was? I don't. Yeah, that's not fair. You have all editing rights. <laughs> that's right. And control. All right, we're going to spin around and look at Fred and Dave, who are part of Bill's tribe. They came out to get some sticks so Dave could make a pop-up teepee out of the back of his truck. Lodge poles. Lodge poles. We got it. Firewood. <laughs> Get the target ready. There's Griffin with his bow. 